Hey good people, Batavia here. It is September. We're in the backyard garden. We are talking containers, raised beds, fall plantings, and what's left of summer. See you in a few. Okie doke, so quick housekeeping items. We have thank yous to those who like, watch, comment, share, and subscribe to Be Better Guard. We appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, consider it. And if you do, hit the notification bell so you're alerted each time I share more hashtag garden joy. All right, so we were last together about a month ago. Today is September the 25th, and there's so much that's changed in the garden. So let's dig in. Okie doke, so we have from the front of the backyard garden, or I guess the top of the porch, we have three containers, which I love looking at. I can see those two over there from the kitchen. This was a kale mix, like lacinato kale. Mostly it looks like Tuscan kale takes off, but this was planted on September the 5th. Today is September the 25th. So that's just 20 days of growth from seed to that point. Um, we have these containers over here, which is the mescaline mix which is a combination of different leafy greens. Uh, super duper cool. Uh, we're gonna let these get a bit larger. A lot of what I'm gonna show you, I don't plan on letting get to full size based on how much time I have left. I'm in Chicago. My average first frost is going to be October the 29th. So that's just over a month from now. Um, so we don't have a whole lot of time. Some of the stuff will be fine. You know, some of it's pretty hardy, but other things not so much. Um, remember the remnants of the tomato that we lost. This is the volunteer plant, so it's grown on its own outside of the cage, baby. So we do have an opportunity for critters to get to tomatoes before I do, which, you know, I have a lot to give, so we're not going to complain about that. But I do have a method to try to get as many tomatoes off of that plant as I can. This is my favorite section of the backyard garden for fall. So, my favorite container section as well, I think. So over in this section, we have a lot of new planting since we last were together. Claytonia, which is really just coming up and starting to put on a couple of true leaves. It's also called Miner's Lettuce, and I grew it for the first time last year. Super duper good. If you want to put it on a sandwich that you have, if you want to add it to salads, um, if you have a bowl of soup, you can toss the leaves in there. A um, little bit of texture, a little crunch. Check out the beets. So this is not your traditional red beet like I have over here, but this is two types. I have al white albino, I think on this side, and then over here is a new one that I'm trying, um, white avalanche. I harvested white albino and another golden beet earlier this spring um, and it's definitely earthy but not as strong as you would get from your typical red beet. Super duper excited. I'm keeping a close eye on this because I also want to harvest these leaves. They're just gorgeous and I'm sure they'll be tasty. We still have that Nevada lettuce that went in at the end of June and it's struggling a bit but these leaves are absolutely edible and that's what we want <laughs> so we're going to be eating those in the next week or so. Um, here's another container that I did kind of some mixed greens with. We're going to harvest, and this is the size that I want this kale to get now. So, again, harvesting a lot of this young, which is not normally what I do, but in this scenario, that's what I plan on doing. Then down here, we have some more lettuce leaves and things. And so, it'll be nice to give this stuff down here some more sun once I pull these leaves. And I'm using cut and come again with all of these, so I'll just harvest the leaf itself and leave the plant intact. Carrots that are still growing, still need a little bit more time. These are from June that we sowed the seeds. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, we'll talk next summer about whether or not we're going to try this particular squash again. Ford hook char just taken off. Super duper slow. Um, up here we have this is like the third time's the charm. So I tried sowing lettuce up here a few times. And finally I said, all right, we're going to move on. And on 9-5 again, I sowed this um, a combination of vivid pak choy and Russian kale. You'll hear me comment on that. Those two 
particular greens often it's not that they're my absolute favorite but they are quick producers and they I have so many seeds that I saved um, off of two plants maybe it was more than two plants I can't remember now but a couple of plants I saved those seeds and they're enjoyable different flavor different texture you know again quick producers um, so these leaves are again intended to be um, harvested when they're smaller over here just a quick comment about this kale so we sowed this I'm gonna say back in the spring if not the spring the very early summer and I've grown kale here in Chicago throughout the summer before I'm gonna go with it's this variety it was dormant almost all of the summer but now I can absolutely see new leaves being put on and some of the placements of my containers are very intentional some of it is the cabbage moth hasn't bothered this kale here so I'm kind of just leaving it where it is um, we have some um, peppers from the summer um, this is the row of buckets and I just really want to show off the Corno de Toro first year growing them I purchased the seeds with the goal of it being a red pepper but they sent me the yellow you know and I figured that out you know pretty late in the game um, but this looks so gold and beautiful the ones in the front yard are more of a yellow color but they're still gorgeous all right we're gonna do a quick run by of these two beds these were essentially planted in the spring so a couple of new things that went in I do have the kohlrabi which is finally putting on some size here I pull the other two out and they're planted in containers um, we do have a couple of mustard leaves in there but most of the other things like the turnips no we did plant turnips in here but the beets are here uh, carrots which I should be getting in here and, and harvesting those few carrots here parsnips we'll see what they do absolutely I missed my window of harvesting the um, the rutabaga for the leaves but the veggies themselves are still edible so the leaves have taken a turn um, I had some earlier this year and they were so good and so that was my intention but time got away from me collards we'll come back around and spend some special time with the scholar bed but just check out the size man it's like this is <laughs> they're like four feet tall now and I've had to do some special things to try to keep them covered some of them have been successful some not so much but we still have some great greens in there so I want to show the new wall of containers along the garage so this is where I said I moved out another one of the kohlrabi plants but I wanted to just share this spinach is like six or seven years old um, I had seen someone gifted me they were labeled 2014 2015 I sewed heavily just trying to figure out hey you know are they gonna grow and some of the plants are all right arugula this line I have a bunch of damage so the cabbage moth is going to town so here is let's see I have a lot of like fully grown worms here and so we're just putting them in a bucket of water here I have to come in once we get done and do a really good look at these but the sure sign is holes in the leaves poop um, that is a telltale that you have some critters in here and I know that there are things you can do and spray it's just at this point that's not the thing I want to do um, so I'm just trying to pick them stay on top of them as you know I use a lot of coverings to try to protect the greens from actually having the cabbage moth land on them I didn't do that for this and you can kind of see where the damage is but all in all I'm confident it'll be fine <laughs> um, so we have more of the mustards and I don't know if I showed you in the on the porch but I have some mustards that I put in that I move when I thin them from the front yard garden and I just put them into the containers in various spaces in the backyard here are some turnips more vivid pak choy more cabbage worms uh, more mustards this is more mustards again <laughs> so here we have um, kale oh I can't wait to show you the kale that I recently put into the one of the garden beds here but this is one of the leftover plants more worms um, 
and this is one of the other kohlrabi plants all right so my favorite spaces for raised beds now so these two raised beds were completely turned over since we last were together and this bed i have a spinach the variety is like a giant winter spinach so that's what this is um, and then i have some uh, radishes so i did radishes like uh, along this line getting easier to get to when they're ready to harvest and then because i'd sowed heavily which is not my thing but i think it may be becoming my thing i did move some of them into kind of the middle row my intention is to give this spinach that's planted here and here and then there's one more kind of scarce row right there but my intention was to give it some room to grow and i want to pull out these radishes first because we know they'll be ready before the spinach really gets ready so check out the new creation so this cage i guess we'll call it not the cage baby but the cage i i have a little short video which i'll share later in the week but i redid this to make it taller and most importantly well it started with let's change out the poultry wire i think it's hardware cloth is the official name if you search for it online um, like at home depot or lowe's so i wanted to change this out because the wire that I've been previously using looked like this. So these holes are a lot easier for the cabbage moth to get through. So she would just dance around in this cage. So I swapped them out for this. And I didn't use this originally because it's kind of harder to work with. But so far, it's been a week and a half or so and I haven't seen her in here. I haven't seen any damage. Um, and so the transplants that I bought for um, the kale, still look really healthy and good um, but when I realized that I could use this for brassicas I um, decided to make it taller so there are gonna be some brassicas that won't need this kind of height um, let's see if I can open this with one hand kale could probably get this tall you know or taller um, but we know at this point what we plan on doing with kale between now and when the weather gets really bad um, I don't expect it to top out, you know, at the top of the cage. It's three feet tall now. It used to be uh, two feet tall. But I could definitely do, like, cabbage in here, broccoli, cauliflower. So this gives me one more space to grow brassicas and basically try to rotate them, which I'm trying to be better at. But these plants are doing really well. And again, intentionally planted a bit closer together because um, I'm not expecting them to get to full size before this year is up. Um, I'm hoping that I'm going to probably cover this bed with plastic and that next spring we can get some new life out of these plants. Um, all right, so we're going to come around. A couple more things. All right, keeping with the theme of fall. So I have, this is the kale mix that was also kind of that mixture of Russian kale, which is the dominant grower here. But there is some lacinato kale. Tuscan kale here um, so this was planted on sowed I should say on August the 14th so that's just like five and a half weeks of growth this is the size that I, I want these other kind of containers to get to um, I'm gonna harvest this again with the cut and come again method and hope to get some new growth off of these plants uh, more mustards that we pulled out of the front yard garden and planted here which seem to be doing okay this is the winning kohlrabi so this is a part of the four pack that i purchased and it um is the size that i want to harvest it at so i was just waiting to get this video <laughs> uh together before I, I harvested this plant and you can see i tucked in like the last couple of the um the kale plants that i had from the transplants i purchased and i did that here i left one whole 10 gallon container there for the um, kale so that's plenty of room to grow here is the same container with the herbs that we started way back when um, it is doing better I'm gonna close up this cage because you know we don't want the moth to take advantage of all of our hard work all right so the last things we're gonna show the monster monster volunteer this is the tomato plant that I'm still not certain of the name of the, the actual tomato um, I planted this last year 
I started what I thought was a brandy wine based on the seeds and I've grown brandy wine before and that's not what these look like so it was they were prolific last year I think I had two plants um, but these tomatoes are so small where they're just harder to process and because there's so many of them you can only eat so many of them fresh um, but look at what happened I didn't plant them this year and the garden said it wanted to grow it so this is a single plant um, it is gone wild and I've let it um, and I am just trying to get to the tomatoes probably even before this like once they get a little bit of pink on them I try to take them off uh, and harvest them and again some of them I'll lose but that's fine because I have a plenty so the cage baby essentially has a few fewer tomato plants um, we did we pulled the green zebra that was right in that space um, and then we still have two plants here but I took a good look yesterday and there are only so many maybe a few dozen actual tomatoes that are on the plants um, these are the few that are really really ripe um, and that will harvest those today as you can see there's a lot of dampness we had a little bit of rain last night so I want to harvest these and so there are a couple more here we've had a great tomato year if you will um, the things I wanted to grow didn't exactly grow the way I wanted but all in all I still got a bunch of tomatoes so happy about that we still have peppers in here I wanted to come in here and show the kale another example of this kale taking off I direct sowed this way back in April and I've left this container in here because it's been unbothered by the cabbage moth and again my theory is you know let it let it live where it's gonna live if it's uh, not being bothered by anything so super duper pleased with that because I was really interested in growing and eating this kind of purplish kale um, so we're gonna do probably a lot of these containers are gonna go under plastic in an attempt to overwinter them um, so that'll be coming in like the next maybe couple of months so things that are a bit more hardy uh, and this is I'm gonna spend some time in this bed in particular and maybe a really short short video um, but this is two by four as far as the spacing so from the cage baby to basically here is where the bed stops and we have so many peppers that are growing here sweet peppers is what I planted here so these are just beautiful um, I have bell peppers here um, a bunch of beautiful yellow bell peppers uh, you can see there I'm just super happy with this space and so we want to come in I need to process a few more things indoors before I'm ready to get started with these peppers um, and then lastly I have sweet potatoes so I'm gonna wait I have sweet potatoes here and in the front yard I'm going to wait until um, right before the weather gets really cold uh, before I harvest those I want to try to give them as much growing time as possible although our temps are dropping now we're getting kind of nighttime temps in the 50s um, so a lot of, kind of my summer things are basically gonna do what they have done and that'll be it alrighty thanks for spending some time with me if you have any questions or suggestions feel free to drop them below and we're probably gonna talk front yard garden next I don't know we'll see but we'll see you on the next one